Summer, it's a little chilly out there today, huh, Squeaks? <laughs> it's winter in North America. And even though we bundle up when we go out, it always feels good to come inside to get warm again. Inside, it feels warm enough to be spring or summer, at least spring or summer here at the fort. There are some places on Earth that are cold all year long, even in summer. <laughs> Yes, really, Squeaks. Places like Antarctica. Let's take a look at a map of Earth to see where Antarctica is. If we want to go to Antarctica from the fort, we would need to travel all the way down to what looks like the bottom of the Earth. This is the Earth's South Pole, and this is Antarctica. This is what it would look like if we could see Antarctica from space. All that blue on the map shows that Antarctica is completely surrounded by ocean. We can also see this white color over all of Antarctica. What do you think that means, Squeaks? Oh, snow is a good guess. Lots of the land in Antarctica is covered with ice, even when it's summer there. <laughs> Ooh, good question, Squeaks. He wants to know why it's so cold in Antarctica. There are a couple of reasons. First, look at this picture of the Earth. We can see that it's round. Sunlight that strikes the middle of the Earth come straight down. If you were standing there, the sun would be beating down directly on your head and it would feel warm. But because the Earth is round, it curves away from the middle at the top and bottom. In places near the top and the bottom of the Earth, the sunlight isn't so direct. It's more slanted. That means the sunlight that reaches the North and South Poles isn't as strong as it is in the middle of the Earth. Since sunlight makes things warm, that means the temperatures at Earth's South Pole and Antarctica are cold, even in the summer. And the winters are even colder. <laughs> Why is winter colder? Let's look at the map of Earth again. Here are the poles. See how they're not straight up and down? Since they're the top and bottom of the Earth, we can tell that Earth is actually tilted a little bit. Because of this tilt, for part of the year, each pole takes a turn pointing away from the sun. And when this happens, it's winter at that pole. During Antarctica's winter, the South Pole points away from the sun, so it gets even less light than usual. And there are periods of time when the sun never even comes up. So Antarctica winters are very cold and dark. How cold does it get? Well, Antarctica is one of the coldest places on Earth. In the middle of Antarctica, it's about minus 51 degrees Celsius or minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit all year round. Brr, that's colder than it ever gets here at the fort and much colder than even a freezer. But Antarctica can sometimes get even colder than that. In 1983, Scientists recorded a temperature of minus 67 degrees Celsius or minus 89 degrees Fahrenheit. <laughs> yeah, that certainly does explain the ice we saw on the map. Almost all of the water on Antarctica is frozen solid into ice, and most of the liquid water is buried deep beneath the surface. This is one reason that Antarctica is considered to be a desert. You're right, Squeaks. Many deserts are hot and sandy, but what really makes a desert a desert is how dry it is. And Antarctica doesn't get very much rain or snow. That means Antarctica is actually drier than some of those hot, sandy deserts. <laughs> oh, interesting thought, Squeaks. Does anybody live in Antarctica? The answer is Nobody lives all year round, but scientists do visit and stay to study this incredible place. Thanks to their work, we know that lots of different kinds of animals live in and around the chilly ocean waters on the coast of Antarctica, like big elephant seals, sleek leopard seals, crabs, fish, terns, and seagulls. Most of the world's species of penguins live there too, including emperor penguins, the biggest penguins on Earth. Good question. What about polar bears? Polar bears do live in a frozen climate, but they live near the North Pole in the Arctic, which is at the very opposite end of the world from Antarctica. And although polar bears are great swimmers, even they couldn't tackle such a long swim. Plus, to get from the Arctic to Antarctica, 
they would have to swim through some warm parts of the ocean. And since polar bears' bodies have thick fur and extra fat to keep them warm in their frozen habitats, swimming in warm oceans would make them way too hot. So it's best for polar bears to stay nice and cozy in their Arctic home. And that leaves plenty of space in Antarctica for all of its amazing native animals. Speaking of cozy polar bears, I could certainly get a little bit warmer. Let's go have some hot cocoa. <laughs> what you watching, Squeaks? What's so funny? Oh, penguins! They can be really funny, but they're also really interesting animals. Penguins are birds, but they stand upright instead of bent forward like a duck or a chicken. And penguins are birds that can't fly. <laughs> I know, that's weird! Instead of flying, penguins' bodies are perfectly built for swimming and diving and for keeping warm in the cold ocean. And lots of penguins need to keep from freezing when they're out of the water, too. When we think of penguins, we usually picture Antarctica, the icy continent all the way on the bottom of the Earth. Antarctica has more penguins than anywhere else in the world. Like these Adélie penguins. Scientists found a group of these penguins living on islands so hard to reach, they're actually called the Danger Islands. In fact, no one ever found these penguins until they use satellites to look down at them from space. Or these emperor penguins. These penguins can grow well over a meter tall and weigh over 40 kilograms. <laughs> that is bigger than you. Ooh, how about these handsome macaroni penguins? Say, Squeaks, we said that penguins live in Antarctica, where it's super cold but they don't wear scarves or mittens to keep warm like we do. Do you notice any special structures or body parts that might help them survive in the cold? <laughs> you know what? Penguins are snappy dressers. They look like they're wearing tuxedos, getting ready for a very fancy party. But that's not all. What else have you noticed? Oh, that's right, they waddle. We were talking before about how silly penguins look when they walk on land. It's fun to try walking like a penguin. They look kind of like people, but sillier. Sometimes penguins who live in the ice and snow will slide across the snow on their bellies, which is called tobogganing. They use their flippers and feet to steer and push themselves along. We need a toboggan to slide along in the snow, but a penguin can just use its belly. <laughs> they do look like they're having a good time, and they're already dressed for a night on the town. Penguins may look silly walking on land, but in the water, where they catch their food, they're superstars. There's one thing all penguins have in common. They're all talented swimmers and divers, and they all depend on swimming in the cold ocean to find their food. Check these out. On the side of the penguin, what do you think these are, Squeaks? Oh, they're not wings. They're not hands. Instead of those, penguins have flippers. Flippers are a great example of a structure or body part that helps penguins move around. They're flat to help penguins push themselves through the water. Penguins use their flippers like the paddles of a boat, moving them up and down like they're flying underwater. And they're covered in short feathers, which help penguins move through the water Fast. Even though these birds can't fly in the sky, penguins are amazing at flying through the water because of the structures on their bodies that help them take deep dives and long swims. For example, penguins have heavy bones to help them sink in the water and dive deeper. They also have special structures under their eyes that help their bodies get rid of salt so they can drink salty seawater. And let's look at the overall shape of a penguin's body. Do you see how, with their feet and flippers tucked in, the penguin's body actually looks very smooth? When they're swimming, penguins bring their head and feet 
close to their body to help them steer through the water. A penguin's body is just the right shape to slice through the ocean really fast. When they're swimming very fast, sometimes penguins will porpoise or leap out of the water like dolphins or porpoises. <laughs> Right! And they don't do it on accident, Squeaks. Penguins do it on porpoise. <laughs> These rock star swimmers spend about half their time on land and half their time in the ocean, swimming around and finding food. Penguins can dive hundreds of meters deep to search for food, swim thousands of kilometers to return to their nesting colonies, and hold their breath underwater for a long time. And did you know that penguins' mouths are specially built to help them catch their food while they're swimming underwater? Check this out, Squeaks. It's a little wacky, but this is the inside of a penguin's mouth. <laughs> it's okay, Squeaks. I promise they won't bite. Well, not exactly. The penguin's mouth is that way for a reason. Can you guess what it is? Ooh, you're right. It's to help the penguin eat. Penguins eat slippery things like fish and squid. Penguins' mouths are lined with tiny spines, and those spines help them grab onto their slippery food so they can catch their lunch on the go and keep on moving. Oh yes, even their dapper looking feathers help a penguin be a penguin. Their thick coat of feathers are perfectly made to keep them warm and dry in the cold ocean by keeping heat inside their bodies. Plus, their feathers push water away so that when penguins get out of the water, they dry right off. And the colors of their feathers are perfect too. Did you notice how many penguins seem to be black and white? <laughs> yeah, specifically, penguins have black bodies and white bellies. When penguins are swimming, animals above them have a hard time seeing their dark backs against the ocean depths below them. And from below, their white bellies blend in with the sunlight, which makes them harder for the fish they're hunting down below to see them coming. <laughs> yes, just like that, Squeaks. <laughs> Oh, you're right. Penguins sure are impressive. They may be cute, but they're tough enough to survive some pretty challenging situations, like the freezing cold of Antarctica and cold ocean waters and catching slippery fish. And though they don't fly through the air, they fly all across the ocean in their snazzy feather suits. Do you want to look up some more kinds of penguins with me? <laughs> Ooh, just wait until I tell you about how emperor penguins survive the winter. Hi there, Squeaks and I have been learning all about Antarctica, a place so cold it feels like winter all year round. <laughs> oh, Squeaks says his favorite thing is the penguins. We learned all about them too, like how they look funny on land but are super graceful in the water. <laughs> oh, yeah, you're right that you won't see many other animals on land in Antarctica. But looking below the surface of the Southern Ocean and the Antarctic seas, you'll find a very different story. Even though it's freezing cold, penguins and many other animals swim in the seas surrounding Antarctica. These are called marine animals. Marine is a word that tells us these animals live in the ocean. <laughs> oh, I would have a really hard time swimming there too. It's so cold. But for these marine animals, the super cold ocean is a great habitat. A habitat is a place that provides everything an animal needs to live, like food and a place to stay. These animals are part of a huge food web in the ocean, with different animals that live and swim near each other and even eat each other. It's pretty amazing, and each creature in this food web has a special way to survive the cold. <laughs> How is that possible? Well, let's take a look at this leopard seal. Do you see anything that would help them keep warm? <laughs> Ooh, good observation, Squeaks! It can be hard to tell sometimes because the seal is wet, but they have a warm fur coat. But that fur on its own wouldn't be enough to keep them warm. So seals actually have another secret layer that helps them stay warm while they're swimming in cold water. <laughs> How do they do it? 
Under their skin, seals have a special layer of fat called blubber. This blubber doesn't get cold easily and acts like a super thick coat between the cold seawater and the warmth inside the seal's body. Most marine creatures like seals, whales, and orcas, and penguins, have some amount of blubber especially around Antarctica, and being big and blubbery helps to keep the cold outside of their bodies instead of having it sink in and freeze their insides. <laughs> Ooh, good question. Not every animal has blubber, so how else could swimming creatures stay warm? Well, not every animal needs to stay really warm to survive. Squeaks, what's another animal that you might think of when exploring underwater habitats? You're right, they are so neat. Different species or types of fish can live in marine habitats all around the world, including in freezing cold Antarctic waters. Fish are part of this food web too. They're food for penguins, seals, and orcas, so it's super important that there are fish that can survive in the cold. Take a look at the group of fish called nodothenioids. These fish don't have blubber, so the insides of their bodies get cold enough that it could freeze another animal. Oh, no worries, buddy. Nodothenioids have a special adaptation that stops them from freezing. Their blood has special substances that lower the temperature at which liquid water freezes into a solid. We call substances like that antifreeze. Even though nodothenioids live where it's cold enough to freeze water or a person, the antifreeze in their blood keeps the fish swimming along without becoming fish sickles. It would be really interesting to have anti-freezing blood. For many animals like nodothenioids, their chilly home is just fine by them. There are sometimes other problems because of the cold, though. Well, let's go from looking at big animals to teeny tiny animals. A favorite food of many Antarctic sea animals are teeny little critters called krill. Krill are related to crabs, lobsters, and shrimp. Antarctic krill's insides don't need to stay as warm as a bird's or a mammal's, so they don't have fur, feathers, or even blubber to keep themselves warm. They can even grow faster in colder waters. Krill eat phytoplankton, which are itty bitty things similar to plants that grow in the water. Some phytoplankton grow well in the cold, but when winter comes to Antarctica, the seas get too cold and there aren't as many phytoplankton for krill to eat. Well, the krill survive without food by shrinking. Adult Antarctic krill can molt or shed parts of their bodies. They can even use some of their old body parts, kind of like food, so they can shrink down and stay alive. When the summer comes and the waters become slightly less cold, the phytoplankton come back and the krill grow big again. Oh, it does sound like it might be hard to grow and shrink so often. But without these super survivor krill, so many animals would go hungry. Krill are eaten by fish, penguins, seals, whales, and even more marine mammals. Each of these animals in this freezing food web has their own unique adaptations to help them deal with problems that come from living in extreme cold. Whether we're looking at the blubber of seals, the amazing antifreeze blood of fish, or the shrinking skills of krill, each animal survives in its own way. And many of these animals rely on each other. The bigger animals need there to be plenty of smaller animals there to survive. Without the tiny krill, there wouldn't be big whales. <laughs> yeah, isn't it neat how everything's connected? Even in one of the coldest places on Earth, there's so much to learn about animals and how they live, eat, and survive. Say, why don't we find some videos about krill and learn about eating in the cold while we eat something cold? I have some ice cream in the freezer for us. <laughs> We're off to learn more about ocean life around Antarctica. If you'd like to learn more about amazing extreme animals with me, Squeaks, and all of our other friends, be sure to hit the subscribe button and we'll see you next time here at the fort.